Hey there, language explorers! Get ready to turbocharge your English skills as we dive headfirst into the wild world of slang, idioms, and expressions. In this electrifying video, we're unlocking the secrets behind 57 of the hottest phrases that native speakers drop like it's hot every day. Say goodbye to boring textbooks and hello to the real deal. We're decoding the language of the streets and giving you the inside scoop on how to sound like a true English pro. So, buckle up, because this linguistic roller coaster is about to take you on a thrill ride you won't soon forget. Thank goodness. This expression is used to show that you are glad, grateful, or relieved that something is all right. Note that the double O in good is an uh sound, which we pronounce by raising the back of our tongue while rounding the lips and moving them forward a little. Uh. Uh. Good. Good. Goodness. Goodness. Thank 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 goodness. Give someone an update. To give someone an update means to provide them with the most recent information. For example, if you're working on a project at work, your boss might ask you to give him an update every day or two. This means he wants to know the latest information on how your work is progressing. When speaking fast, we should link the words N and update together for a smooth flow. Give me an update. 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 Maybe you can give him an update. Maybe you can give him an update. I just wanted to give you an update. I just wanted to give you an update. Take care. Literally, take care means to be cautious or to keep oneself safe. However, in spoken language, we use this as a way of saying goodbye to family and friends. Take care. 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 Go ahead. To go ahead means to start or continue doing something, especially after receiving permission. Do you mind if I sit here? No, go ahead. Go ahead, I won't interrupt again. The word, go, ends with the vowel O, and, ahead, begins with the vowel, A. So when speaking fast, we'd add a really soft, w, sound, in between the words to link them together. Go ahead. 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 Hang in there. 
When you tell someone to hang in there, you are encouraging them not to give up despite difficulties and to keep trying. The final sound of hang is mm. in the red. They should sound like hang in, hang in, hang in there, hang in there, hang in there. 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 You gotta be kidding me. The word kidding means that you are saying something that is not really true, as a joke. Essentially, this expression is used to show that you are very surprised by what someone has said because it is ridiculous or completely untrue, and you do not accept it. You gotta be kidding me. 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 Nothing for me. This means I don't need or care for any. The expression is used to politely refuse an offer of food or drink. Would you care for anything to drink, sir? No, nothing for me, thanks. Do you want anything to eat, Tim? Nothing for me. 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 Way to go. If you are pleased or impressed by something someone has done, you can say, way to go. The expression a good job can also be used as a synonym. Way to go. 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 Go for it. Go for it is an informal way to encourage someone to increase their efforts to achieve or win something. Remember to link the final sound er in for with the initial sound e in it. For it. For it. Go 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 for it. Sure thing. The phrase, sure thing, is used to indicate agreement or as a polite reply to thank you. Can you give me a hand lifting this box? Sure thing. Thanks for your help. Sure thing. Sure thing. Sure thing. Sure thing. 
Sure thing. Sure thing. Sure thing. Sure thing. Blow something. To blow something means to miss an opportunity to do something because we do or say the wrong thing. In other words, you spoil or botch something. That was a great opportunity, but now I've blown it. You blow my chance. You blow my chance. You blow my chance. I'm gonna blow my chance with Jackie forever? I'm gonna blow my chance with Jackie forever? Do not blow a chance to see this movie. Do not blow a chance to see this movie. I've got to run. Literally, to run is to go faster than a walk. But in some contexts, I've got to run now, doesn't mean that the speaker is literally going to run anywhere. It is simply a casual way of saying goodbye to someone, usually accompanied by an excuse. Well, it was nice talking to you, but I've got to run now. I have an appointment at the dentist's and I don't want to be late. I've got to run. 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 I'm out of here. I'm out of here is slang for I'm leaving. Usually, native speakers shorten the word out of to outa. 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 So when we link I'm out of, it should sound like I'm outa. I'm outa. I'm outa here. I'm outa here. I'm outa here. I'm out of 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 here. A fool and his money are soon parted. Fools are people who behave in a foolish manner without thinking. Note that the double O oh, in fool is an uh sound, which we pronounce by raising the back of our tongue while rounding our lips and moving them forward a little. Uh. Uh. Fool. Fool. And to be parted means to be separated. So, this idiom means if someone is not sensible with their money, they will soon lose their money on worthless things. A fool and his money are soon parted. 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 Make ends meet. To make ends meet means to have a hard time surviving on just enough money for your basic needs. In fast speech, we link the ending sound in make with the initial e in end. Make ends. Make ends. Also note that the s added to the end of the word end is a z sound. Ends. Make ends meet. My parents had a hard time making ends meet, but somehow they managed. 
she had to work three jobs just to make ends meet. Make ends meet. Make ends meet. Make ends meet. I was struggling to make ends meet. I was struggling to make ends meet. Without them, he can't make ends meet. Without them, he can't make ends meet. Cost an arm and a leg. To cost an arm and a leg means to be too expensive. To make it easier to memorize, just imagine that to be able to afford something that costs you an arm and a leg, you might have to sell your limbs. Let's try linking the words together to create a smooth flow. Cost an arm and a leg. Cost an arm and a leg. I'd love a larger apartment, but it'd cost an arm and a leg. 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 And it won't cost you an arm and a leg. And it won't cost you an arm and a leg. This campaign is costing us an arm and a leg. This campaign is costing us an arm and a leg. Money talks. This idiom is used to talk about people or organizations that are rich and therefore have the power to get or do whatever they want. Because basically, money speaks volumes. Note that the O oh, is an uh sound. Also, the ending S in talks is a S sound. Talks. Talks. Money talks. Money talks. Sadly, money talks in this town, and if you don't have the cash, you're out of luck. Money talks. Money talks. Money talks. Money talks, people. Money talks, people. Hey, it's a hundred dollars. Money talks, son. Hey, it's a hundred dollars. Money talks, son. All that glitters is not gold. The verb glitter refers to something that shines brightly and flashes with light, like a diamond. In the American accent, the double T in the word is pronounced as the fast D sound, as they are between two vowels, I and E. It also sounds the same as the rolling er. sound of many languages. When the tip of the tongue touches the upper gum ridge, glitter, glitter. In this idiom, it is implied that what seems lovely and sparkly may not be what it seems when you take a closer look. All that glitters is not gold. All that glitters is not gold. All that glitters is not gold. All that glitters is not gold is a reminder that we can't always trust our senses. All that glitters is not gold is a reminder that we can't always trust our senses. Have deep pockets. Deep is an adjective referring to a large distance that exists between the top and the bottom. The double E is pronounced as the long E sound, which we produce by making our mouth wide, like a smile, while our tongue touches the sides of our teeth. E Deep Deep Children should be kept away from deep water. 
Typically, pockets are small pieces of material sewn into or onto clothing for the purpose of carrying stuff. Note that the O is pronounced as an AH sound. AH POC POC While the E is pronounced with a short E sound. Pocket Pocket So, having deep pockets essentially means having a large sum of money. The politician will do anything to avoid scandal, and everyone knows he has deep pockets. Have deep pockets? Have deep pockets? Have deep pockets? The Russians have deep pockets. The Russians have deep pockets. Hope your guests have some deep pockets. Hope your guests have some deep pockets. On a shoestring. By contrast, when you do something on a shoestring, you're doing it on a very small budget. Remember to link the words on a with a when you speak fast to sound more smoothly. On a shoestring. Starting a business on a shoestring is difficult. On a shoestring. On a shoestring. On a shoestring. Produced on a shoestring budget, Easy Rider became a massive financial and cultural success. Produced on a shoestring budget, Easy Rider became a massive financial and cultural success. Tighten your belt. Having something tightened means fixing it in a more secure position, making it harder to move, open, or separate it. Note that when the sound is followed by an mm. sound within a word, as in the word tighten, make sure you hold the T and then add an mm. without releasing the tongue from the gum ridge. Tighten, tighten, a belt is a piece of material that is worn around the waist to support clothes or to decorate them. By tightening your belt, you're spending less money than you used to because you have less money. People who want to cut down on spending and save money by living on the cheaper side are said to tighten their belt. He's had to tighten his belt since he quit his job. Tighten your belt. Tighten your belt. Tighten your belt. You gotta tighten your belt. You gotta go home, sit down. You gotta tighten your belt. You gotta go home, sit down. Fred Andrews will have to tighten his belt. Fred Andrews will have to tighten his belt. A person is considered poor when their income falls below the breadline. The cluster EA is pronounced as an E eh. sound. Bread. Bread. Breadline. Breadline. So, to live on the breadline means to have barely enough to survive. After the pandemic, a lot of people are on the breadline. On the bread line. On the bread line. On the bread line. Looks like that. Be on the bread line. Looks like that. Be on the bread line. Daylight robbery. 
Daylight is the light that comes from the sun during the day. We stress the word on the first syllable. Daylight. Daylight. Meanwhile, a robbery is the theft of money, property, or a vehicle. The crime is often committed with force or threats. The word is also stressed on the first syllable. Is pronounced as Is pronounced as a. Is pronounced as a. Daylight Robbery Daylight Robbery Daylight Robbery Daylight Robbery Daylight Robbery Come running Daylight Robbery in general mayhem. Cut your losses. If you cut your losses, you stop doing things that will obviously fail before more money is lost or things get worse. Instead of waiting to see whether they will improve, he decided it was time to cut his losses before the stock market crashed. Cut your losses. Cut your losses. Cut your losses. Should we consider cutting our losses? Should we consider cutting our losses? As I say, we cut our losses. As I say, we cut our losses. company is in the red, or if their bank account is in the red, they have spent more money than they have on hand. Therefore, they owe money to the bank. The man is $500,000 in the red. In the red. In the red. In the red. We can sometimes come across in ways that are offensive to people who are in the red. We can sometimes come across in ways that are offensive to people who are in the red. Flat broke. To be broke is to have no money. Don't forget the ending sound. Broke. Broke. And by saying that you are flat broke, you are emphasizing that you have no money at all. I'm broke. Flat broke. Flat broke. Flat broke. Flat broke. I mean, flat broke. I mean, flat broke. Sammy, I'm flat broke. Sammy, I'm flat broke. Dollar for dollar. Dollar. Well, I bet we all know what it is. The O is pronounced as an AH uh, sound. And the word is stressed on the first syllable. Dollar. Dollar. Dollar for dollar, the idiom refers to the consideration of the cost and value of something. Often, this occurs during comparison shopping. Dollar for dollar, you cannot buy a better car. Dollar for dollar.
dollar for dollar. Dollar for dollar. Because I do. Dollar for dollar. Because I do. Dollar for dollar. That's dollar for dollar property tax relief. That's dollar for dollar property tax relief. Hey, what's up? This informal and friendly greeting is commonly used in casual conversations. It's a way of asking someone how they are or what they're doing at the moment. The phrase is versatile and can be a conversation, catch up with someone, or simply express a casual interest in the other person's current state or activities. It invites the other person to share what's on their mind or what they've been up to recently. For example, Hey, Mark, haven't seen you in ages. Hey, what's up? How's everything going with you? Tell me what's new. What's up? What's up? What's up? Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? I'm running late. Be there in a few. This phrase is commonly used to convey a delay in one's schedule, often due to unforeseen circumstances. It's a considerate way of informing others about the delay and expressing the intention to join them soon. For example, Hey, I got held up at work and I'm running late for dinner. I'll be there in a few, so please order without me. I'm running late. Be there in a few. I'm running late. Be there in a few. I'm running late. Be there in a few. I'm running late, but I'll be there. I'm running late, but I'll be there. I'm running late. I'm running late. It's a piece of cake. It's a piece of cake is an idiomatic expression in English, and it means that something is very easy to do. When someone says, it's a piece of cake, they are expressing that a task or activity is simple and requires little effort. It's a casual and lighthearted way to convey that the situation is not challenging. For example, you're worried about the math test? Don't be. It's a piece of cake. You've got this. It's a piece of cake. 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 I'm totally swamped with work. This phrase communicates a high level of busyness or being overwhelmed by work-related tasks. The word swamped is used metaphorically here, suggesting that the person is inundated with tasks and responsibilities to the point where they may be feeling stressed or pressured due to the workload. It's often used to explain why someone may be unavailable or unable to participate in non-work-related activities. For example, I can't make it to the movie tonight. I'm totally swamped with work, and I have a deadline to meet. I'm totally swamped with work. I'm totally swamped with work. I'm totally swamped with work. I am swamped with work. I am swamped with work.
I'm really swamped with work right here. I'm really swamped with work right here. I'm just hanging out. I'm just hanging out is a casual and informal expression that conveys spending leisure time without engaging in any specific or planned activities. When someone says they are just hanging out, it suggests a relaxed and laid-back attitude. It could involve various low-key activities, such as lounging at home, chatting with friends, or simply enjoying free time without a structured agenda. This phrase is often used to indicate a moment of downtime or a break from more structured or formal activities. For example, What are you up to this weekend? Not much, just hanging out at home, maybe catching up on some reading. I'm just hanging out. I'm just hanging out. I'm just hanging out. Um, I'm just hanging out, really. Um, I'm just hanging out, really. I'm just uh, hanging out. What are you doing? I'm just uh, hanging out. What are you doing? Let's grab a bite to eat. This phrase is like an invitation to share a meal in a relaxed and sociable setting. This phrase casually puts forward the idea of heading out for some food or perhaps ordering in together. It's a simple yet friendly way to propose a meal, creating an easygoing atmosphere for a shared dining experience. This expression is adaptable, fitting for moments when you want to suggest a casual get-together with friends, colleagues, or even acquaintances, all while bonding over some delicious eats. For example, feeling hungry. Let's grab a bite to eat at that new sushi place downtown. I've heard it's fantastic. Let's grab a bite to eat. Let's grab a bite to eat. Let's grab a bite to eat. Let's grab a bite to eat first. Let's grab a bite to eat first. Let's grab a bite to eat. Let's grab a bite to eat. No worries. Take your time. This phrase is a reassuring and understanding expression used to alleviate any concerns someone may have about being in a hurry or causing inconvenience. When you say this, you are expressing patience and a lack of urgency, letting the other person know that there's no pressure or rush. It's a considerate way to convey that you understand that circumstances may be causing a delay or requiring additional time and you want to reassure them that it's perfectly okay. For example, I'm sorry I'm late. The traffic was terrible. No worries, take your time. We're just glad you made it. No worries, take your time. No worries, take your time. No worries. Take your time. No worries. You decide. Take your time. No worries. You decide. Take your time. No worries. Take your time. No worries. Take your time. It's a small world. It's a small world is an idiomatic expression used to express surprise or amusement when encountering someone or something unexpectedly, especially in a context or place that seems unrelated. The phrase suggests that the world feels smaller and more interconnected than one might expect. It's often used in situations where the coincidence of meeting someone in an unexpected place is remarkable or amusing highlighting the interconnectedness of people and events. For example, I met your cousin at the conference. It's a small world, isn't it? 
It's a small world. It's a small world. It's a small world. Oh man, it's a small world. Oh man, it's a small world. It's a small world, isn't it? It's a small world, isn't it? I'm feeling under the weather. When someone says they're under the weather, it means they're not feeling well or are experiencing some level of illness. It's a polite and somewhat euphemistic way of saying that one is not in good health without providing explicit details about the nature of the ailment. When someone uses this phrase, it's typically an indication that they may be feeling sick, fatigued, or generally unwell. For example, I won't be able to make it to the party tonight. I'm feeling a bit under the weather and need some rest. I'm feeling under the weather. I'm feeling under the weather. I'm feeling under the weather. I'm still feeling under the weather, but I'm here. I'm still feeling under the weather, but I'm here. Dr. Griff, I'm feeling a little under the weather. Dr. Griff, I'm feeling a little under the weather. I'm all ears, tell me more. When someone says, I'm all ears, tell me more, they are expressing a strong interest in what you have to say and a willingness to listen attentively. This phrase is a figurative way of indicating that the person is fully engaged and ready to hear more details or information on the topic being discussed. It conveys openness, receptiveness, and a genuine curiosity to learn more about the subject at hand. It's a friendly and encouraging way to invite further conversation and to signal that the speaker's thoughts or experiences are valued. For example, you mentioned you had an exciting travel experience. I'm all ears. Tell me more about your adventures. I'm all ears. Tell me more. I'm all ears. Tell me more. I'm all ears. Tell me more. Please tell me more. I'm all ears. Please tell me more. I'm all ears. Ricky, I'm all ears. Ricky, I'm all ears. I'm on the fence about it. I'm on the fence about it is an expression that indicates a state of indecision or hesitation regarding a specific decision or situation. When someone uses this phrase, they are conveying that they haven't fully committed to a particular choice and are still considering the factors involved. It's as if they are metaphorically sitting on a fence, not firmly on one side or the other. This could imply that they are weighing the pros and cons, assessing various aspects, or simply feeling unsure and in need of more information before making a definitive choice. For example, I'm on the fence about accepting the job offer. There are aspects I like, but I have reservations too. I'm on the fence about it. I'm on the fence about it. I'm on the fence about it. I'm still on the fence about it. I'm still on the fence about it. I'm still on the fence about the celibacy club. I'm still on the fence about the celibacy club. Long time no see. This is a common English expression used as a friendly and informal greeting when you meet someone you haven't seen in a while. 
It's often employed to express surprise or delight at reconnecting with someone after an extended period of time. The phrase is a bit casual and is typically used in social situations with friends, acquaintances, or even colleagues. It acknowledges the length of time since the last meeting and adds a positive and friendly tone to the encounter. For example, Sarah, long time no see. How have you been? We should catch up sometime. Long time no see. 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 What are you up to this weekend? This is an informal and common way to ask about someone's plans or activities for the upcoming weekend. The phrase, what are you up to, implies curiosity about what the person has scheduled or intends to do during their leisure time. It's a versatile question that can be used to initiate a conversation about weekend plans, whether someone is going on an adventure, relaxing at home, spending time with friends, or engaging in any other activities. The use of up to adds a casual and approachable tone to the question, making it suitable for various social situations. What are you up to this weekend? 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 I'm just killing time. I'm just killing time is an informal expression that communicates a sense of spending a period without any specific or planned activities. This phrase suggests a state of leisure or idleness where the individual is not actively involved in a particular task or engaged in structured plans. It implies a relaxed attitude, indicating that the person is filling a gap in their schedule until something more substantial or scheduled occurs. This expression is commonly used in casual conversations to convey a laid-back approach to the current moment. For example, the train doesn't arrive for another hour, so I'm just killing time at the bookstore. I'm just killing time. I'm just killing time. I'm just killing time. I'm just killing time before work. I'm just killing time before work. I'm just killing time here, waiting for my opportunity. I'm just killing time here, waiting for my opportunity. It's a game changer. When someone says, it's a game changer, they are indicating that a particular thing has the potential to bring about a significant and positive transformation in a given context. The term game changer is often used to emphasize the groundbreaking or revolutionary nature of the subject being discussed. It implies that the described element has the power to profoundly impact and improve a situation, industry, or field often introducing new possibilities or setting a new standard. For example, have you seen the latest smartphone with the advanced camera technology? Absolutely. It's a game changer in the world of mobile photography. The image quality is incredible and it's reshaping our expectations for smartphone cameras. It's a game changer. It's a game changer. It's a game changer.
Dude, it's a game changer. Dude, it's a game changer. It's a game changer. It's a game changer. Pay the price. The phrase pay the price is often used metaphorically to mean experiencing negative consequences as a result of one's actions or decisions. When someone pays the price, it means they suffer or face hardships because of something they did or failed to do. In essence, paying the price implies facing the repercussions or bearing the burden of one's choices, whether it be financial, emotional, or otherwise. It serves as a reminder of the importance of considering the potential consequences before taking action. For example, Sarah decided to skip her classes, and now she's paying the price with failing grades. Pay the price. Pay the price. Pay the price. Now they're paying the price. Now they're paying the price. We'll pay the price. We'll pay the price. The same old story. Imagine if you have a friend who always makes excuses for being late. You might say, it's the same old story, because it's something that happens over and over again without changing. For example, every time we plan a picnic, it rains. It's the same old story every summer. He promised to change, but it's the same old story with him. He never keeps his word. The same old story. The same old story. The same old story. It's the same old story. It's the same old story. The same old story all over again. The same old story all over again. Saved by the bell. Have you ever been in trouble but then something happened to rescue you at the last moment? That's being saved by the bell. For example, if your teacher is about to give you a difficult math problem to solve, but then the bell rings for recess, you're saved by the bell. The car broke down, but we were saved by the bell when a tow truck passed by just in time. Saved by the bell. Saved by the bell. Saved by the bell. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell. Saved by the bell once again, Mr. T. Saved by the bell once again, Mr. T. At your own risk. This is a warning. If you do something at your own risk, it means you're doing it knowing that it might be dangerous or could have negative consequences, and you're responsible for whatever happens. For example, if there's a sign saying swim at your own risk near a lake, it means there might be dangers in the water, and if you swim anyway, you're responsible for any accidents. At your own risk. At your own risk. At your own risk. You get involved at your own risk. You get involved at your own risk. I'd enter at your own risk. I'd enter at your own risk. Push your luck. Push your luck is an idiomatic expression used to caution someone against taking unnecessary risks or tempting fate by continuing to pursue a favorable outcome beyond what is reasonable or safe. When you push your luck, you're essentially testing the boundaries of good fortune or success, often to the point where it may lead to negative consequences. For example, if you keep winning at a card game, but you decide to keep playing even though you know you might lose, you're pushing your luck. 
She got away with being late once, but she's pushing her luck by arriving late every day. Push your luck. Push your luck. Push your luck. Don't push your luck. Don't push your luck. Let's not push our luck, okay? Let's not push our luck, okay? Down the hatch. Down the hatch is an informal expression used as a friendly or celebratory toast before taking a drink. It's commonly used to encourage others to finish their drink in one go, often with enthusiasm and camaraderie. This expression is typically used in social settings, such as parties, gatherings, or when sharing drinks with friends. It adds a sense of cheer and camaraderie to the moment, encouraging everyone to enjoy themselves and participate in the toast. He raised his glass and shouted, down the hatch, before taking a big gulp of water. Down the hatch. 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 Down the hatch, everybody! Down the hatch, everybody! Down the hatch, everybody! Down the hatch, everybody! The big league. Imagine you're playing a sport and you're really good at it. If you get invited to play with the professionals, you're in the big league. It means you're at the highest level of competition or success in your field. Getting a job at that company means you're playing in the big league of the tech industry. The big league. The big league. Welcome to the big leagues. Welcome to the big leagues. Move up to the big leagues. Move up to the big leagues. Check something out. This is a versatile and commonly used phrasal verb in English, often employed to suggest looking at or investigating something with interest or curiosity. It can refer to examining or exploring a wide range of things, including places, objects, websites, books, movies, or events. For example, you should check out that new restaurant downtown. I heard the food is amazing. I checked out the latest book by that author from the library yesterday. The phrase implies an invitation or suggestion to take a closer look at something, either physically or virtually, to gain more information or experience about it. It's commonly used in casual conversation and can indicate genuine interest or excitement about sharing something noteworthy with others. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out, check it out, check it out, check it out. Check it out, check it out, check it out, check it out. Check that out, check that out. Make sense. Think of make sense as a way of saying that something to form a clear picture. For example, imagine you're reading a complicated passage in a book and suddenly everything clicks and you understand the author's point. You might say, oh, now it makes sense. It's as if all the pieces of information have fallen into place and you can see the whole picture clearly. Similarly, situations, when someone explains something to you and you grasp the reasoning behind it, you might say, that makes sense. 
It's a way of acknowledging that the explanation is clear and logical, and it aligns with your understanding of the topic. Makes sense. Makes sense. Makes sense. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Nothing makes sense down here. Nothing makes sense down here. Sick and tired of something or someone. This phrase is an idiomatic expression used to convey strong feelings of frustration, annoyance, or exhaustion towards a particular situation, person, or thing. When someone says they are sick and tired of something or someone, it means they have reached a point where they are extremely fed up with it and have had enough. For example, if someone says, I'm sick and tired of my job, it means they are feeling very frustrated or unhappy with their job and may be considering quitting or making a change. Similarly, if someone says, I'm sick and tired of your excuses, it means they are fed up with hearing excuses from the person and want them to stop. I'm sick and tired of it. I'm sick and tired of it. I'm sick and tired of it. I'm sick and tired of this crap. I'm sick and tired of this crap. I'm sick and tired of having nobody. I'm sick and tired of having nobody. Sleep on it. If you have to make an important decision but you're not sure what to do, you might decide to sleep on it. This means you'll wait until the next day to make the decision, after having some time to think about it. For example, if your friend asks you to go on a trip with them, but you're not sure, you might say, let me sleep on it and I'll give you an answer tomorrow. Sleep on it. Sleep on it. Sleep on it. Let's sleep on it, okay? Let's sleep on it, okay? Let's sleep on it. Let's sleep on it. You bet. You bet is a common English phrase that expresses strong agreement or confidence in something. This is a way to say definitely or absolutely. When someone says, you bet, they're showing strong agreement or assurance that what they're saying or what they're going to do will happen. For example, if you ask a friend, do you want to go to the concert with me? And they reply, you bet. It means they strongly agree and are excited about the idea. Saying, you bet, is a way of expressing agreement or confidence in a positive and enthusiastic manner in everyday conversations. You bet. You bet. You bet. Coffee house? You bet. Coffee house? You bet. Thank you. You bet. Thank you. You Don't sweat it. Imagine you're feeling worried or stressed about something and someone tells you, don't sweat it. What they're really saying is, don't worry about it or don't let it bother you. It's like a friendly reminder not to get too worked up or stressed out about a situation. Don't sweat it. 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 Get foot in the door. 
get foot in the door means to secure an initial opportunity or entry point, typically in a professional context. It's like making a small start towards a larger goal or gaining access to potential future opportunities. For example, by volunteering at the event, she hoped to get her foot in the door of the fashion industry. Get foot in the door. Get foot in the door. Get foot in the door. You can't get your foot in the door without us. You can't get your foot in the door without us. You get your foot in the door. You get your foot in the door. Sooner or later. Sooner or later is an expression used to indicate that something will happen eventually, without specifying an exact time frame. It implies that the event or outcome is inevitable, whether it occurs relatively quickly, sooner, or takes a bit more time, later. Here's an example. Let's say you have a goal of learning to play a musical instrument, but you've been putting it off due to a busy schedule. A friend might encourage you by saying, sooner or later, you'll find the time to start learning the guitar. In this context, sooner or later suggests that, at some point in the future, you will inevitably make time for learning the guitar, even if it's not immediately. Sooner or later. Sooner or later. Sooner or later. Everyone is cured sooner or later. Everyone is cured sooner or later. We'll catch him sooner or later. We'll catch him sooner or later. And that wraps up our exploration of 57 essential English slang, idioms, and expressions. If you found this video helpful and enjoyed uncovering the richness of the English language with us, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating language content. And hey, if you have any favorite expressions or questions about today's lesson, drop them in the comments below. We love hearing from you. Until next time, keep practicing, keep expanding your linguistic horizons, and remember to spread the word about our channel to fellow language enthusiasts. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.